And we're live, everyone, for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, your host, and as usual, Seth Wernchaub is here. How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good, Fred. All right, let's jump in. We have a bunch of news to cover. We're going to start with the uh, Tesla price cuts, um, which was probably the biggest news of the week. It happened uh, well yesterday morning or two like, a nights ago, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, but yeah. The, the the short story here, in short, it's a $2,000 price cut on all options for the Model 3, $5,000 price cut for all options on Model S and X, uh, regardless of the type of powertrain you choose. So it brings basically brings down the price of the lower Model 3 to now $38,000. Right. If you and so, what about the thirty-five thousand yeah. dollars call, calling only one? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't count this one really because, like, it, it's it does exist. Like, people can order it, but it's like off the menu item. Like, it's such a weird like way to to to, for, to, to sell a car. It's like, you sell a car, but it's not listed everywhere. You have to know about it. You have to like it's, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, this is the cheapest one. The standard range plus now is thirty-eight thousand dollars, which is a change for Tesla already because the the it's been going up in prices the last two times that it was price changing on the car. Uh, so now a two thousand dollar price cut on that car that, that's significant here, and I think it's a, it's a clear indication that Tesla is having some dumbing issues right now. Uh, I was surprised by the Tesla fans on this one. Like when I mentioned that it was likely because of of, of dumbing issues, they were like, "No, no, no, nothing to do with dumbing issues." Like, like with the circumstances here, like I think that's that that's clear that's the case. I mean, it also. If you don't have them in issues, you don't price down the car. Like yeah, you, what what is the uh, rationale then? If it isn't demand issues, what the people who said it wasn't the what that they weren't demand issues? Oh, Tesla's made the efficiencies improvement in in, in uh, during the lockdown, and now they are reducing the price. But Tesla has been trying to increase the gross margin on on, on the cars. The the uh, the the kept the kept uh, uh, having guidance for higher gross margin. And that will not help the gross margin to cut the price by two thousand bucks here. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's clearly because they they want to spur uh, demand in, in in the current. Uh, I mean, who's buying cars right now? There's not that many right. people that that, well, that that are thinking of buying cars. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's it's no knock against Tesla, and like nobody's yeah. buying cars from anybody. Like it's it's mm. just like people are having trouble, you know, getting by in life right now. It's not it's not a, a Tesla's losing ground to anybody else kind of issue yeah even even if you didn't lose your job even if you uh didn't get a, a salary cut well a lot of people that didn't lose their job also took a salary cut recently uh or or, or people like us who depends like on, on advertising and things like that all advertising revenue are down so we're still lucky to have uh, um to have a job but we our incomes are down so even if like that situation you're still getting money it, it doesn't look good because you're just thinking like, is it the right time to do a big purchase with the uncertain times in terms of the financial situation around the world, really? So, it's uh, I'm sure Tesla is having a tough time, even though they're back at production, uh, they're getting their production back and running right now. It's probably still hard to move the cars. Here's an important question, though. I I remember, and this might be me being crazy, but I remember. Elon at the launch of the Model Y saying something about the Model Y is going to cost three thousand more than the Model Three. Uh, you know, similarly configured. Is that? Do you remember that, or am I? Am I? Uh, or, maybe five thousand dollars? No, I thought it was I five thousand. Oh, was it five thousand? I don't know. I thought it was three thousand. And uh, you know, if you drop the Model Three, then with that formula, you have to drop the Model Y. But maybe yeah, I'm well, it wrong. that's the other thing too. If if they're really doing some uh, if, uh, efficiency in production, and, and that's what driving the the price reduction and, and not the main issue, then Tesla didn't move the price of the Model Y at all, which I think has something to do with the fact that uh, they they still have a backlog of order for for the Model Y, so they don't need to, to move the price, and uh, and that's actually also a good thing in my opinion for. Uh, uh, especially for those that just took delivery, it's so frustrating when you've been waiting for your car for a year, yeah, and then Tesla would drop their price just after you start deliveries. Like that's not that, that's not right. Like that's not an issue right. with that before. That was a big uh, controversy before. Yeah. Hopefully so if I'm if I'm comparing the price of the Model Y with Model Three right now, 
of course, Model Y is no standard range plus at the moment. So we have to do with the long range dual motor, which Tesla sell at $53,000 right now versus uh, $47,000 for uh, with the, the recent price cuts. So uh, that's a $6,000 difference. So it's not, it, it's if, if I remember correctly, they were aiming for a $5,000 difference. So it's not, it's not that far off here. Um, and of course, it's because of the of the price cut here that that it changed. I'm sure that uh, we we're gonna have a better idea maybe a year from now when um, Dunman's gonna stabilize between Model Three and Model Y. Uh, we still think, of course, Model Y is, is serving a bigger market than Model Three. Much bigger. Yeah. So, but but they all, they also Model Y they have the backlog of orders that just it's skewing the Dunman uh, unfairly right now. For the car, yeah, and there's some improvements to the Model Y that the uh, Doug De Mer De Mer no Sandy Monroe, Monroe, yeah, yeah, uh, highlighted. Which you know, if you're a close Tesla follower, you're you're like kind of excited about those things. Uh, one thing was the uh, that uh, what is that the heat pump thing that theoretically gives the Model Y a much bigger car, uh, similar range as as the Model Three, um, and you know, In cold weather, yeah. Less wiring, all those little improvements. Yeah, there's a bunch of little improvements for sure. Uh, I, I would assume that model that Tesla is going to bring those to Model Three if they haven't already. Uh, the it should come like relatively soon. I mean, I, I'm not talking about like the the body improvements and things like that. Like that that that's a much uh, harder things to to change in the production process to like change seventy parts into one. I don't think Tesla is going to do that anytime soon. But the heat pump, if they can fit it in. That would that would be a big deal. Yeah, it's that Andy Andy from the comments is saying octo valve, and that's the word we're we're skipping on. Yeah, octo valve is the other part of the uh, uh, e pump system that uh, Tesla designed, especially for Model Y. So this, those are a significant improvement for sure. Uh, but Model Three is still selling well too because it's cheaper. I mean, I'm sure that the standard range plus is. I would love to have a mix of of orders on the Model Three. The Tesla is never releasing that though. It's it's unfortunate. Um, but I'm sure that the standard range plus is a best selling car for Tesla right now. Right, and you know this isn't. We don't know what this is going to have any effect on the uh, battery day or anything, but theoretically, at some point soon, the the Model S and X upgrade with theoretical plaid should be you know within months away from getting announced yeah uh, i mean last time that we got a clear timeline on that was summer of uh, 2020 so it's coming up pre pretty soon uh, that would be a big deal for for model s cell uh, and i would assume that model x cells will also like uh because it, it should uh probably my understanding is that they're gonna have to change the entire powertrain for that. So, it's, so Tesla is gonna finally update uh, the battery pack for Model S and X with, with with that upgrade. It's not just gonna be like the tri like the tri motor configuration is gonna require some changes here. Uh, so I would wouldn't be surprised if we see this decent efficiency gain for Model S and X. So it's a, it, it in term of performance, it's clearly like the the thing that's gonna see the biggest increase in demand is gonna be the Model S performance version for sure. Um, because of the the tri motor play, plaid um, powertrain, but I think uh, the the Model X, if it sees an efficiency gain again uh, with a longer range, that will also increase them for that car. So I, I think both vehicles are set for a boost in in demand by the end of the year. And also, we still think that Tesla has plans for for uh, interior refresh. Uh, whether it's going to be the exact same time, I don't know. Maybe the timing is going to be a little bit separated because, of course, Elon says that there's no refresh in Tesla's vehicles. And we know, uh, I would argue that's not exactly the case. Um, so those two combined will, will likely create a big boost in them and for from uh, Moss and X. And sure enough, in the meantime, they both get a decent price cut, like $5,000. I mean, now... We're talking about uh, Model X starting at uh, eighty thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, yeah, eighty thousand dollars for the Model X, which hasn't been the case since Tesla uh, was selling the car with a smaller battery pack options. So now right. you get a hundred kilowatt hour Model X for uh, eighty thousand dollars. Once those upgrades, the cars happen later this year, I would assume that Tesla will adjust the pricing there. Uh, so uh, if you want a cheaper brand new Model X, 
that's probably your best chance there. And same thing for 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 Model S here at seventy five thousand dollars for uh, a car that goes uh, supposedly four hundred miles. If you if you believe uh, Elon Musk's comment about the EPA, though the EPA is uh, is denying it, but. Uh, that's that's the longer and range, longest range electric vehicle you can buy today, and uh, you, you get a new lower price for it right now. So yeah, a lot of good things happening, but it's clearly because Tesla is trying to boost up. <laughs> so don't don't try to get me with that efficiency improvement stuff. Uh, oh yeah, though for Model S and S and X, it came with uh, removing the free unlimited free supercharging option. So. It was the last 10 for free unlimited supercharging with Elon has been calling it uh, unsustainable. Tesla has removed it on Model 3 for a long time now and it never came from Model Y, but it was still an option. Uh, well, not an option, it was it, it was coming with all new Model S and X orders uh, without even having a, a referral, pro, a referral uh, code on it or anything like that. Uh, but now uh, with the update, it has disappeared. So. I don't think that's worth five thousand bucks, though. No, nope. probably worth like. How much would you pay for that? Like, if it wasn't well, an option on the car. I mean, if you're test loop, then it's probably worth five thousand dollars. But yeah, but an average customer. I mean, right, an average customer. What they go on two or three trips, long road trips a year. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not worth much. Maybe a couple hundred bucks. I mean, over the life of a car, you're getting mm -hmm. each time you stop, you're probably putting in like, I don't know. $12 worth of electricity. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, it's just not worth that much. Like people are very like, Ooh, it's, you know, like free supercharging for life. Like I've probably spent, well, I mean, I, I've got some referral free supercharging, but yeah. you know, I probably, if I was paying for that, I probably spent like, I don't know, $200 in the, my whole, like, you know, six or seven years of owning Tesla's. So you know that's not a big deal for me like yeah. it's a free supercharging is almost meaningless to me i think tesla would probably sell a lot of those if they were charging a thousand dollars for it or something like that uh, maybe even two thousand dollars some people would buy it i think but yeah you're right i, I don't see it's worth it though uh, of note interesting and again when regarding uh trying to get some a diamond boost from tesla here i see that if you look on the new inventory vehicles uh the cars are still listed with free unlimited supercharging which telling me that Tesla is trying to to sell those cars right now, like saying this is the last chance for you to get free unlimited supercharging. Right. Uh, and some of the cars too, I've seen uh, price drops on them too because those are brand new vehicles, and uh, so so the, the the price it doesn't exactly match. Well, it depends. Like you know, Tesla charge more for the color, but like at the pricing that I see, uh, the uh, the this seems to to have been adjusted with the new uh, new custom order price. Uh, but for inventory vehicles so tesla is probably trying to push some of those right now yeah and so i mean this kind of uh, we didn't really t write a post about this but um how do you see battery day uh affecting demand uh you know i would assume like tesla's going to announce a new type of battery um the specs on the battery aren't going to be that much better in terms of like charging speed or density I think they're going to be pretty similar, but you know the the main innovation is going to be producing producing them faster and cheaper, and you know in much smaller space. Um, but do you I, think? I, I think I think it's going to for the Model S next is going to come with a uh, charge rate increase to match Model Three and Y, though. Oh yeah, definitely. Nice. I mean, I, I kind of feel like that should have been baked in a while ago. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah. but anyway, my my point is like, how does Tesla avoid the Osborne effect, where when they announced the new battery tech, everybody's like, oh, I'll just wait for that. I'm not gonna buy a, a Tesla now. I mean, that's gonna be a big event, the battery day. It's gonna make, you know, the, the it's gonna make the papers, it's gonna be on the news. And, you know, even the people who aren't electric, you know, followers are gonna know like, hey, there's this new battery technology coming down the pike. You know, what, what are Elon, they Elon is good about that stuff and about controlling the Osborne effect. He's very good, I, I, in my opinion. So what I see happening is maybe uh, maybe something like uh, I'm speculating here. It's not based on sources, though. Though I have a source that told me that uh, Elon was pushing for for a Model S or X to be equipped with a, 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 the new battery cell 
uh, for demonstration at Battery Day. That was back when it was supposed to happen in May, but of course it's been pushed several times now, which might be good for what you just said. The, the longer you push it, the closer it would be to the production launch. So we know that Tesla has been operating um, a prototype production line in Fremont for a while now. Um, so I'm not sure of the capacity there, but I, my understanding is that it's a decent capacity of production from, from that line because uh, the the whole point is to is to show a capacity for high volume production uh, in 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 a, a small space smaller space uh, without without using too much capital expenditure and um, and achieving good pricing so that's what they're trying to demonstrate with that power plant so so by a consequence of that the pilot is not like it is not like gigafactory level of production but it's still my understanding is it might be in the in the megawatt hour uh, already. So maybe they use some the, the production from that line to just produce small S and X batteries uh, for with, with the, the update to the battery powertrain uh, for, that that come with the Plaid update and everything. So maybe they update the lineup starting with that. And for the most part, what it does, it doesn't really affect Model Three, Model Y cells, uh, even if it's a new batteries because it's really not the same cars uh, and and. In some sense, it's only catching up to the to the battery technology in Model Three and Y because of what we just said about the charge rate, which is already higher in Model Three, Model Y, than Model S and X. So you catch up with that, and then Tesla has always aimed for Model S and X to have a higher range than the cheaper Model Three and uh, and Y. So that will also help on on that front. So maybe 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 I could see Tesla. At battery day, announcing Model S and X with the new batteries and um, uh, the the new performance that those batteries enable. So you don't you, you don't have an Osborne effect here, even if it's like a month out or something like that, a few months out. Uh, Tesla's probably just gonna try to liquidate its its current inventory of Model S and X, which is still not a big deal compared to to what Model Three and, and at that point maybe even Model Y is gonna be uh, generating. So uh, I, I can I can I can see the Osborne effect being mitigated uh, in s s maybe not this exact scenario that I just said, but something similar to it. Yeah, and of course, like they could secretly be putting it in cars soon. already too. Yeah, right. that's that's that would be on par for Tesla. Like they've done that, like announcing something and like, oh, by the way, it's been in the cars in the past month. Right. So yeah, I, I could see that happening too, but but for sure, uh, there's no production capacity that that that, that they can just turn on and already be uh, okay for Model Three and Model Y. But for Model S and X, with the kind of deliveries that Tesla's been doing on those models for the past few quarters, I think it's definitely achievable. Uh, at one point, we were talking, thinking maybe Tesla was waiting for like the Tesla Semi, because it seemed like the Tesla Semi needed a uh, 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 like. A breakthrough battery capacity, right. breakthrough improvement in battery capacity to to enable the specs that Tesla was talking about. But now with Tesla pushing uh, deliveries to uh, 2021, uh, that doesn't well. It, it still seems like it would depend on those batteries, but the the, the timing doesn't match uh, what what Tesla plans to do. Um, so yeah, right. And I would even argue the Cybertruck specs kind of imply that there's going to be a big battery upgrade. Oh yeah, I certainly agree with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, uh, what's the range on the top model? Five hundred miles, right? Five hundred so, miles. It's a uh, it's a lot for for so, such a rugged big truck like that, right? So it's at least a two hundred kilowatt hour battery. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Uh, free. Uh, no, we did free supercharging, but supercharger expansion. Elon commented on that yesterday, which uh, was a really um, an encouraging comment here. He said that. Uh, the apparent slowdown, though it wasn't exactly a slowdown uh, of supercharger deployment. It, it was just like as an accelerated, like we thought it would compare last year. But Tesla still in the past 12 months installed more supercharger than the same period the year prior. But anyway, he said that the slowdown was due to supercharger V3 production. And he said that it will now speed up and it would result in more supercharger station coming soon. So yeah, I think uh, the year before announcing Supercharger V3, Tesla had installed like just under 300 uh, new stations, and in the last, uh, in the year after the Supercharger V3 unveiling, they, they installed 350 stations. 
So there was a little bit of an acceleration, but nothing like we were expecting. Like we 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 saw the the Tesla missing one supercharger target after the other. I mean, the the biggest one was this Tesla's goal of eighteen thousand superchargers. Uh, now I'm not mixing up stations and superchargers. Like when Tesla talk about superchargers, they refer to supercharger stalls. So they were aiming at eighteen thousand by the end of two thousand eighteen, and they hit twelve thousand. Uh, right now they are at sixteen thousand five hundred around the world. So yeah, um, we were expecting that when Tesla finally unveiled the V3, and that was in March of last year, there would be a big ramp up. But apparently, uh, based on what Elon just said, like the, the supercharger V3 production, which apparently now is mainly at uh, New York, built in New York, has been quite slow. And of course, Tesla had to shut down the factory too uh, with the pandemic. So now he says that uh, production should get going again and will speed up. And uh, that should result in more uh, station being being uh, installed. Supercharger. If you look at supercharge.info right now, we see uh, 93, uh, at least 93, because that's just the one that they found. But th there's definitely more out there. Out there, 93 supercharger station under construction and 120 in the permitting phase. So that's um, that would probably enable Tesla to hit that um, 18,000 supercharger goal by the end of the year, which would be two years late which is not too bad on Elon time. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, there's not there's not much better that Tesla can do to improve demand, demand than uh, more superchargers. Like, I mean, how many times have you heard someone telling you like, oh, I, I would go with a Tesla, but I need I need a supercharger at a specific spot that I, I do often to visit my in-laws or whatever. Like the, like we, you, you, you hear that a lot. Like just people have specific trips that they do, and if it's not covered by the superchargers, it's harder for them to justify that that purchase, which is which is fair. Also for current owners, it's a it's a big deal. I mean. Uh, I never had that problem in Quebec, but now that I've been uh, often uh, living in, in, in California for a while, and of course, there's a much higher concentration of Tesla owners here, and some of the stations are just way too busy. We have to wait behind four or five, six cars, which is, of course, not something you're used to do um, for gasoline cars. On top of it, gasoline cars to fill in, it takes just five minutes. So if you wait for two or three cars in front of you, it's not that big of a deal. But if uh, if yeah. uh, every car is doing a 20, 30, 40 minutes uh, charge session and you have four or five cars in front of you, that's uh, depressing. Like you're like, oh boy, how long I'm gonna be here? Is that is that mostly like city, city dwellers who are uh, just don't have like curbside parking or uh, garages where they can charge, or is that people traveling up and down and all around? Well, you clearly like the worst when there's a big traveling weekend. That's where you see the worst of it. So, so that's clearly that. That's that's traveling. But I think with the Model Three, I think the Model Three, uh, the the first thing that you explained that the city dwellers that don't have a charging station at home, uh, I I think the Model Three has uh, made that issue bigger for sure because now more people that live in apartments and apartments and, and things like that are uh, thinking of Model Three as an option. And if they see that they have a supercharger station next to them, they're like, all right, well, I'll just need to charge once a week there. I go there for, for 30 minutes and then uh, I cover my entire drive for the week. So it makes sense for them. But if if the, the capacity for the supercharger is not there and a lot of people have the same idea uh, to do that, then uh, yeah, that 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 uh, adds to the supercharger load for sure. And I, I see more of those. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it sounds. I mean, it sounds like, especially in places like LA, uh, Tesla is going to have to start making more of those like Kettleman or what like, is that Kettleman where they Kettleman, have those, yeah, Kettleman super, City, yeah, like those super places where they have like you know fifty or whatever mm -hmm. stalls, um, rather than just put like you know one in Culver City and one in whatever and whatever. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that makes sense too. You would think like uh, they would come up with uh, you know like not Walmart, but like uh, Whole Foods or whatever would have like an incentive to like throw, you know, an eight, an eight stall supercharger at their place. And, you know, the electricity would be offset by having, you know, these Tesla owners with 30 minutes to kill. Yeah, they just do level two for that. They do that, but they just do it level two, unfortunately, which yeah doesn't add much for like a, a 40 minute, 30, 40 minute uh grocery trip no not at all mm -hmm. but yeah it's encouraging and uh if you look at the supercharger map which were um updated earlier this year 
you can get an idea of where the new stations are going to be coming out soon or, or you can check supercharge.info for uh, the, the ones that are actually being permitted or in construction right now all right this, one, this one's what we're working on let's let's look into this one so lithium iron phosphate batteries in the mold three made in china so we've heard of that as a possibility from a Reuters report earlier this year but now it's actually confirmed as Tesla applied the, with the uh, Ministry of uh, which Ministry are going the Ministry of Industry Information Technology for approval to sell a Model Three, uh, and the only difference in the filing seemingly is that the, the it, it's using LFP uh, batteries, so lithium iron phosphate batteries, which uh, which Tesla has never really used in cars before. Uh, and most people don't use that technology in cars. The, I mean, the, the big use I've seen from LFP batteries so far, uh, I've seen them in stationary energy storage. But in terms of vehicles, uh, I've, I've mainly seen them in buses. Like I've seen a lot of buses use them uh, because uh, the main issue was uh, energy density. And right. of course, buses don't have that big of an issue with that because they are running on planned routes, so they know their, their their range most of the time. Also, they have a lot of space on try on, on the bus. Like it's they're, they're big. Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, so CATL, which is apparently the one producing the batteries for Tesla here, has been selling a lot of those to bus makers, uh, electric bus makers in China. Like we know, like in Shenzhen, they have thousands and thousands of electric buses now. So there was a big market for that. But the the what, what it enabled though it's to them to keep improving on, on that battery chemistry and now uh, we we are hearing that uh, the energy density is, is is crawling up and and not maybe matching an NCA or an NCM uh, battery chemistry but it's getting up there and of course the LFP uh, chemistry has some advantages over uh, aside like they have the, the biggest disadvantage is energy density but they have advantages in terms of costs. Uh, they don't use any cobalt, so that's a big, big cost advantage here. Uh, they also, uh, you, you can push them. Uh, uh, the, I'm not, I'm not completely clear on like the longevity, like why it, it's like my understanding is not necessarily more uh, longer longevity than than NCA or, or NCM, but you, you can more easily charge them to 100% without degrading as much. So that could reduce, re um, enable uh, more longevity. And there's the big, like, so that, that's the thing that a lot of uh, people have been pushing, especially uh, like uh, Tesla's like Powerwall competitors that use LFP. They keep saying it's it's safer, but it, it's only safer if you, if you pierce them, really. So, and how often that happens. I mean, uh, we've seen, of course, Vehicle let your vehicle catch on fire and crashes and whatnot, but um, it hasn't really been that big of an issue. Though, though, those those electric car fires. So, do we know? Do we know if there's a big weight difference in the in that car? Uh, the weight seems similar, though we couldn't confirm uh, which exact model in terms of uh, capacity it was. So, so um, I, I'm, I wasn't sure on that. But the range uh, we have the weight here that's uh, seventeen hundred kilograms. Uh, which is what five uh, thousand five thousand three hundred three hundred pounds? No, 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 that's too much for for. It's two point two. Yeah. Are you doing it right now? Yeah. Thirteen. Sorry, three thirty-seven hundred to thirty-seven forty pounds. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, the, I think that's similar to the the um. Standard range plus, something like that. I think the standard standard range plus model three, I think is uh, uh, standard range plus three. Thirty five hundred. So it oh, looks like it is a little bit heavier then. Oh yeah, thirty. So unless it's the long range, I don't. It's not clear from the filing. Yeah, I would imagine it's the standard range plus, which is sixteen forty five kilograms. So oh, yeah. it goes up to 50. That, that would make sense. That would make sense because the, the energy density is not as high. So they right. have to put more batteries in it. They just manage to find a space apparently. So, well, I mean, yeah. if they had, if they had the standard age plus and they have the long range, like there's clearly some extra space in there. Correct. So why, why not make, I'm sure all the long range ones are using lith lithium ion mm -hmm. and all the standard range ones are probably using the, uh, 
the what is it iron phosphate yeah iron phosphate so that might be uh i'll test this membrane pump production at, at shanghai so they might just use uh, nca on the longer range version uh, with batteries from from lg cam and then uh switch the standard range plus to um let's say iron phosphate that makes sense to me yeah so interesting move here and I, i'm really like this is of course for china right now so i'm curious to see with the battery day we should probably have a bigger glo like global idea with this suspense for, for batteries but it's it's an interesting development for sure that tesla is like venturing out with new chemistries all right everyone's favorite subject tesla cybertruck elon had some comments on it like the with the the jay leno uh jay leno's garage at the new segment on the cyber truck we've been reporting on it all week it finally aired on wednesday fortunately not that much new information on it <laughs> almost it was almost like less i feel like i know less about it now than i did <laughs> but there's some nice shots of it nice shots of it. you can see it go inside the boring company tunnels and everything also so is, isn't full segment kind of a uh, oxymoron i mean a segment isn't a full i mean it was like six minutes i feel yeah. like they could they could have done a little bit like just give us all the raw footage. Like yeah, we don't, and that that's kind of what they did last weekend. They had this really yeah. poorly cut. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened with that. They took that down. Like that was right. a weird cut. Like I don't know what they put that out. But yeah, anyway, while it didn't have new information, it it pushed Elon to 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 release new information about it because in in the show he was telling Gileno that uh, Leno was asking what tesla's plan was for the production version how the other cyber trucks going to change for the production version and um elon e elon said that oh we plan to make it five percent smaller which elon has been talking about making the cyber truck smaller for a while now and most recently said that's going to be three percent and uh, the show was filmed in january so that, like it, it it changed to three percent since um because they, they, they had some doubt about how much smaller they could make but now now elon straight up said that they cannot do it uh any smaller than that uh so it's going to be the same size as the um prototype which uh which tesla said was 231 inch long 79.8 inch wide and 75 inches tall so that's that's about the same size as a ford f-150 super crew right. so it's not it's not like the cyber truck is disproportionately high for a bit big for for a pickup truck it is it is in the bigger size of, of the 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 full size pickup but it's not uh too big either it's oh. just that like pickup trucks have gotten huge <laughs> that, that's yeah they're getting they, like the super crew is the one with the the, the, the back doors uh for 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 the, the back seat but yeah i mean the the thing is that Tesla was aiming for this thing where they're like, oh, we want to we want a pickup truck that's has all the functionality of a full size pickup like the F one fifty, but as the performance of a supercar and uh, the um, can fit in an average garage, so they couldn't take that last box apparently. You know that's funny because well, it's just funny the way that uh, it was put in the tweet. Uh, Elon said reviewed the Cybertruck design with Franz last night. Even three percent smaller is too small. It will be pretty much the size, <laughs> the size referring to the prototype. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's Franz, I think, kind of telling Elon, no, we're not going to make it smaller. Yeah, I mean, I Elon mean, was pushing for making fit in the garage, and then probably Franz was like, you know, if they, he probably made the calculation, and like if we made it like three percent smaller, uh, like your head's going to try to bump here in the back right. seat, and like he's trying to show like all the the details and. Elon was like, yeah, I'll, I preferred it not to fit in the garage and still have that. So he made he made the call. But yeah, I'm still excited about Cybertruck. Still have my reservation for it. And um, well, I mean, we could skip already to that news because uh, like, I still have my reservation for the Rivian too. But now like Rivian really confirmed that uh, their pickup is being delayed to 2021. So they couldn't say when in 2021 they only say in 2021 they're being like very cautious about how they are um talking about uh, reaching production they, they told me this week that they're gonna update us once they have a, a fixed date but right now they can only say 2021 so we're still hoping for early 2021 which would still make it the first uh, electric pickup truck on the market uh well first decent one like i'm not talking about like, the, the chinese like low range one or the, or the light light pickup trucks that are basically like 
golf carts with with, with a bed, but like a full passenger uh, pickup truck. Oh, unless you believe uh, Lord Storm, uh, Lord's Town Motors, right. that they said is going to come by the end of the year. I have a lot of doubt about that one. Yeah, they're um, kind of unproven in their. Uh, yeah. Um, what, what, what I thought was interesting, though, with Rivian is that they didn't delay the Amazon uh, yeah. delivery vehicle. Yeah. Uh, so what, what happened this week is that they announced the reopening of the factory. So they're going back to work at the factory. And uh, what they announced is that, that actually, actually in the, the it was a joint press release between Amazon and Rivian. So I had to ask Rivian about the R1T and R1S. And that's when they told they confirmed that yeah it's delayed to 2021. Uh, we're gonna update you later. Uh, the 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 press release didn't even mention the truck. They were only mentioning the Amazon uh, delivery van and saying that it's still on time for the first delivery next year in 2021. So very aggressive timeline for them here. Uh, though out of the hundred thousand deliveries, they plan for ten thousand to be on the road uh, in 2022. So this gonna in the first year of production, they are aiming for ten thousand. Which is a decent number. I mean, ten thousand delivery van. That that's gonna have a big impact. Yeah. yeah, and that's from a car company that's made zero cars so, so far. Yeah. So far, so that that's a big ramp. But it does like the Amazon thing does like oh they they you know they gave Rivian quite a bit of money, but that money bought them a you know priority, priority. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I mean, for for people like you and and for. You know. Yeah, I gave I gave Riven a thousand dollars over over a year and a half ago too. So uh, I kind of want a priority, and I can make like any other reservation holders. But a billion dollar contract Amazon apparently is worth more than my thousand bucks, which is disappointing. Like, but I believe it, <laughs> but not surprising. <laughs> no, not surprising at all. Uh, yeah. So I, I but but it's it, of course like I, I'm I, I don't mind because I think it's gonna have a giant impact. Uh, Amazon having a hundred thousand delivery vans. Because it's not like it's not it's going to replace a lot of gas mileage, of course, but it's also going to accelerate all the other delivery services that they're going to look at Amazon cutting their costs with delivery electric delivery vans. They're like, all right, don't want to pay for diesel, don't want to pay for gas too. I want to, I want, I want to go electric, and um, their market's going to accelerate a lot too. I'm sure, well, uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm, uh, Rivian's going to have to focus on Amazon for a while with that big of a contract, but. After that, they, they have the, all the design. They have a, a, a nice delivery van, and also Amazon owns a big part of Rivian, so I'm sure that they're going to be okay with them selling the van to other people too, as long as they fulfill their 100,000 delivery contract. They probably have a clear time, a clear like uh, ramp up too, from 10,000 units to the 100,000 over. It's over a nine year period, so it's not like that. So if they ramp up faster, I'm sure they can either deliver them faster or start expanding and delivering the van to other people. All right, um, Model Y uh, durability testing in cold weather. So that's uh, coming thanks to uh, Jerry Rig Everything, a YouTuber. I met that guy in uh, Norway last year. Very nice guy. We were there to test the Mercedes EQC. Uh, but Tesla invited him to Alaska in, in, in February, but the... the Video was just posted earlier this week to um, check out Tesla's doing some durability testing on the cold, uh, with cold weather for for the Model Y. Uh, so you can check out the video, very beautiful video, some beautiful shots in there. But uh, in terms of new information in it, uh, there wasn't that much, other than um, some 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 things about example that Tesla improve uh, in cold weather versus the Model Three. Uh, we've seen the door handles that was interesting. They they change the door handle so that you you can press on them and they have some gives on both sides of the handle instead of just on the on the uh, larger side so that you can grab the the shortest the the not the one that's not as thick. Um, so that was a, an issue with the Model Three. I mean, I posted a video on that um, two years ago when I first got my Model Three. They, they, if if there was some ice on the door handle, it could sometimes be super hard to to open the door at all. And uh, now now with both sides having give, you can play with both sides. It's going to be easier to break down the ice on it and, and open the door if, if there's a buildup of ice on it. And also at the same time, there was some issues with the charge port. The charge port door for the Model 3 uh, and for the Model Y is, is pretty big. And if there was a buildup uh, of ice on it, it, w- it wouldn't open. Uh, so so now it's eated on the Model Y. So uh, that probably uh, th- that would fix that. 
and I would assume that those those improvements are coming to Model Three too. Though Tesla did release some software updates on Model Three that could um, eat the car differently to focus on the windows because the window when the windows are a big problem too since it's a frameless window the window needs to go down and sometimes it would freeze inside the door and couldn't go down and that would uh, be a problem with your trims. So Tesla addressed that. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a, heat, a cold weather range test to see like the performance of the heat pump. Uh, that was a bummer, but uh, looks like we're gonna have to wait for next winter for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, the uh, shareholder meeting. So I've been going through the document that Tesla released yesterday for the shareholders meeting, and there was a few things that I found interesting. So the meeting is gonna happen on, happen on July seven which is a little bit later than usual for Tesla. I have to assume that's it's due to the, due to the pandemic, I assume. But it's going to be at the Muse, uh, museum, uh, Computer Museum in uh, Mountain View again. It's the usual spot. And apparently you can attend if you're a shareholder, uh, though might be some restriction on how many people can attend everything because it's still going to be in July in Silicon Valley, which is uh, has been very conservative in opening up after the pandemic. And uh, yeah, so the, the, most of the thing is the usual stuff, like uh, they are asking shareholders to vote on re-electing a bunch of uh, directors, including Elon himself and uh, uh, Robin Denham, Denham, Den, mm -hmm. uh, that's how you pronounce the last name, uh, last name? The, yep. the, chair, the chairwoman, that's the chairwoman. Also like uh, ratifying the accounting firm. And there's a bunch of shareholder proposal. Uh, most of them are the same that you see like every time about like uh, the voting system and everything like that. But there's one that was different this year that was interesting. Uh, a shareholder is proposing for Tesla to start doing some paid advertising, which Elon has been completely against for a while. Even though we've seen some evidence of Tesla actually doing some paid advertising, and I reported, sorry, earlier, earlier this month in China on Tesla using one of those big. Uh, Paid influencer that use this, uh, they have this like live streaming system. It's like a shopping network on live stream, uh, and, and Tesla uh, used this this uh, influencer to to basically uh, gather the list of uh, test drives to do. So that was um, a rare move into paid advertising. Though people argue it's not traditional paid advertising, and he said he said Elon was was that's what he was referring to when he said he doesn't like advertising, which is not completely fair. Like. You say he doesn't pay people to like that, that. That's paid advertising. You're doing a live stream with a celebrity who's what, clearly was, getting paid. Was it ever confirmed that they paid her? Maybe they paid her in referral bonuses or something. Uh, I mean, I don't think that's she funny. wants like a few thousand <laughs> supercharger free mileage. And uh, no, it was, it was it was clearly a program that Tesla put in place because because she she had like a Zurich. Uh, uh, page to sign up for for test drives and, and, and things like that so yeah it was kind of weird because you know tesla yeah. doesn't even do celebrity stuff here yeah. in the us but yeah well, the chinese market is different too so i'm sure that tesla's trying to adapt to that but anyway like elon has been saying like we don't do advertising even at one point linkedin to why the mainstream media doesn't like him or tesla is because they don't buy advertising from them which i think is a bit of a stretch but probably not completely untrue either Anyway, this guy, James Danfort, he owns uh, 850 shares of Tesla, and uh, he went through the old process to um, to get the, uh, the a shareholder proposal on, so that means that shareholders will actually vote on this. And he, he laid out the argument that Tesla should start spending at least $50 per car uh, to do some advertising uh, to try to fight uh, the... Um, uh, misinformation about electric cars and, and Tesla in particular, and he laid down this whole argument, and, and you can read, read it on the next track or in the in the proxy document that Tesla issued. But as you can imagine, Tesla's board of director went against it and recommended people to vote against it, and they had their their own argument. They went pretty hard on him <laughs> with it, uh, as they always do with their shareholders' proposal. So uh, uh, let me check the uh, result of the poll here that I did on them. So on the poll, 77% of people said it was against the proposal, 12% uh, were for, and 10% said they will not vote on it. So you know, not too surprising on, on my part. Uh, that's what I thought would happen. But but for my own opinion, and I, I'd like to hear yours on that, yeah, I think it's pretty much inevitable for Tesla to move into some advertising at some point 
relatively soon. I don't know how soon, but maybe like within the next two years. Either that, or or they go back to the refer like a, a referral program that has bigger incentive because right now the referral program like, like people don't care as much about it. Like, uh, or I mean, people I think people would care more about it if they were like more active about it because even though they they are the the thousand miles supercharging, they, they are also apparently a Model Y every month and the and the uh, uh, Roadster every quarter. But we never hear about them. Like it's not it's not exciting if we don't hear about them. They should announce the winners. They should like do things like that. But we don't so, hear about that. So do you know that Tesla is giving away Model Ys and Roadsters? I did ask them about it a few months ago. And uh, what did they say? And they said, "Yeah, we're doing it. We're just not talking." So, about it. so zero people on Twitter. Zero people on Facebook. That's surprising too, right? Like if, if I if I won a Model Y, I'd probably like tweet it out. So you're saying like, you know, all these people over the last couple of years who've won a Model Y or a Roadster. A Roadster? I mean, if you won a Roadster, you wouldn't tell anybody? Hmm. Come on. I mean, it's... It, it is doesn't... weird. I admit it is weird, but I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like there's something up with that. I mean, I agree with you that it's weird, but... That would be fraud. That would be straight up fraud if Tesla is not doing it. So that like it it would be a major screw up if they if they're not doing it. Um, so yeah, I, I would love uh, to be proved wrong. I'm not accusing them of that. I'm just like yeah, me too. Because I agree with you. I agree. It's weird that no one has been like, hey, I want to I want to know why. Like especially how active Tesla fans are on 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 social media. Right, and and the these, fact, these are all people who are referral people. So yeah, so, the, so they're pushing the cars too and everything. So you, uh, you, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I agree, it doesn't make sense. But at the same time, I'm not accusing Tesla of fraud here. Like if they like because if they're not doing it, it would it would be fraud, and I'd be really surprised that Tesla would be doing that. Uh, but yeah, uh, either way, they they need to to like the referral program was very successful, no doubt. It went out of hand with the multiple roadster. We talked about that several times. But if they need to bring back something that that would encourage people more. Uh, of being more active on that front, that it's would be hard work. to top the roadster. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, don't need to top it. Like, just, I, I think even the current version of the program would be a lot more successful if they would just like announce the winner and talk about the fact that you can right. win the Model Y and everything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've still like referred like 200 people since that the program has been like dumbed down to that thing, and, and it, it, it's it, it's 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 still working. How many, how many free supercharger miles do you have? Like five hundred thousand? <laughs> none. I have none free supercharger miles, Why? which makes no sense to me. Like I've and I've contacted them about that, and they, they never changed that because uh, like because I have a Model S on uh -huh. my account, which is free supercharging, so uh, I don't get that. But I have my Model Three. You know what? Though I can... I have a Model X and a Model Three, and my Model X has free supercharging, but I get my supercharging on my Model Three. Yep, I'm I'm in the same situation, but you don't give me uh the free the, the free miles for that. Do you think it has program. anything to do with like Canadian and US uh I don't know. What I think it might have to do is that I used to be on a free supercharger on my mobile three and I wasn't uh after the, the performance change at the discount. Oh right. And uh, I told them like, yeah, that's fine, and I don't need it. But then uh give me my free supercharging mile for, for my referral. I can give two hundred referrals and they, they never change that. Um but at the same time, I, I I've never been charged for for a supercharger either, so I, I don't get it. So like the, Tesla has, has messed the, the whole thing up, really. So it makes no sense. Yeah, I, the whole referral program has been kind of a a weird <laughs> thing. Here, here's my thing. I don't know if you guys can see it. But, yeah, uh, I've gotten one hundred eighty five thousand nine hundred uh, supercharging miles. So like in you my you need whole, to use that within the next six months. Set. I know. In, in my whole <laughs> lifetime, I could never use that many miles. And you need to I do it in six could. months. So it right. makes no sense, too. And I can't give uh, them away. It'd be nice if I could, like, hey. Oh, that would be so cool. Uh, like 20,000 uh, supercharger miles to electric readers. Yeah, that would be awesome. I wonder if I can do that. No, probably not. No, you, can, you can't. Yeah, uh, but yeah. In so November. To, uh, to go back to my point. So, yeah, either they do that, they, they, like, they beefed up a little bit the, the referral program, or... They, um, they they go to traditional advertising, and and my point is is like right now there's not that much competition for Tesla. Also, they, they are a whole argument that we sell all the car we produce, so why we don't need to create more de demand. But I think I think that will change, uh, especially next year when there's a bunch of new electric cars coming to market, 
and uh, especially like the, the Model Y, like oh, Model Y is the is going to be Tesla's like big winner. They're gonna they're gonna um, they're gonna destroy the market there. But there's gonna be a lot of uh, like luxury, smaller SUVs, all electric that are decent too. Like the the Audi Q4 looks pretty good to me. Um, there's gonna there's gonna be a bunch of them that, that are coming uh, next year and the year after that. And so at that point, I, and and you know that those automakers are gonna are gonna advertise like crazy. So I think I think Tesla might have to to counter that to a degree. Um, and I mean, fifty dollar per car would be a good starting point for them. <laughs> like, it's really not that much money. Like a hundred thousand car per year, it's like a five million dollar advertising budget, which is not that much. But my 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 big point, my point, where it would be where it makes the most sense for me is like Tesla already has some dumb issues at the end of each quarter. They do this big like push at the end of each quarter, and they have incentive already there and everything. And it's not maybe like a, a, a global. Uh, diamond issue but it's a market per market diamond issue where they have inventory vehicles sitting in some market and they, they need to deliver them by the end of the quarter so that their their financial looks good so if you have a, a small like five million dollar budget on advertising you could target some and you have already some good advertising in place like a, in the five million like let's say you produce like a million dollars uh, of a, a very good like uh, a campaign for for, for on, on Google Ads or on Instagram, or Facebook, whatever you want to do it, and and then four million dollars for actually the, the impressions, and you, you you target for people that are in the markets where you have your inventory. I think that would be a lot cheaper for Tesla than doing the the current incentive that they put in place at the end of the quarter and the way they they they, they run their employees crazy at the end of the quarter and they do like. Uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, extra times, uh, over longer time. uh, yeah. overtime for employees and everything. So, I think that would be a more efficient use of money. But I think so. Elon has has just stuck up about advertising as an issue here, which I agree with him to a degree. Like a, to like it, it, in general, the advertising business is weird. It, it, it's not the best business ever, but it doesn't mean that you cannot make efficient spending in advertising either right i mean it's there for a reason yeah. it's it's not fantastic but it's a necessary evil yeah exactly oh we just talked about audi and they, they had an announcement this morning that i found really interesting they are they are creating uh and by day i mean apparently it's directly the in, initiative of the new ceo there that has been at audi for like a month or two marcus Oh man, Marcus Deusman. Deusman? Looks like it. All right, we'll call him Mr. Deusman. I'm sorry if I mess up your name. Uh, he created this new team called uh, the Artemis Project. And the goal is to uh, develop new vehicle faster without uh, the, all the bureaucratic hoops that you have to jump to. Like, so we've talked about that on a few occasions before. Like, like that's one of Tesla's big advantage. Like they, they think more like a technology company, like a startup, and they have like a quick cycles of innovation. They can move faster. While the, the big automakers, all the established automakers have very long development programs for a new vehicle. It'll take a decade before a vehicle will hit the market. And one, I'll talk about a brand new model here, not necessarily like a model year or something like that uh, update. And even those, like Chevy Bolt, uh, just got this biggest update to date after uh, five years on, on the market. So, like, it's it, it, it takes time. So, the idea here is they create a group that has much more freedom, that they don't have to go through the entire uh, process with all the different. Uh, departments within the, the within the automaker they can the they, they have more freedoms on that level and their goal is to bring uh, an innovative new model to market quicker now quicker is still not like next year so the, they just started a group now and their their, their first uh, goal of the group is to uh, bring to market what they call a highly efficient electric car in 2024 and th that mention of a highly efficient electric car is also uh encouraging for us because we i mean i i uh, reviewed the audi each one which uh is audi's first all electric car that was built from the ground up that's not like a conversion electric car and i, I really liked it I, I thought i think it's i think i still i still love it i think it's a great suv it's just that it's not that efficient like that that's where that that's where if you compare it to uh, other electric cars especially teslas 
that, that's where it fails. So the fact that they recognize that now, they're like, all right, let's focus on efficiency and see, see what we can produce. Um, it's exciting. So, uh, and I think that any kind of improvement that this group comes up with will also lead to to other uh, EV programs at Audi and maybe even at the broader Volkswagen. So, exciting stuff on that front. I'm I'm, inter I'm uh, very excited about what the Artemis Artemis project is going to come up with. Well, Ar Artemis is that uh, what is that? Is the uh, one of the musketeer or something like? What is I that forgot. about? <laughs> I'm going to Google it and then I'm going to look smart. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter of Zeus. Uh, so probably all of those things come from there. Uh -huh. Artemis program is an ongoing government-funded crewed space flight. Oh, so we should talk uh -huh. to Zach about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Next one, Mercedes. We're sticking with German automakers here. The launch your EQV. Yeah, the little test drive in the EQV last year set. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And uh, what, what happened this week is that they launched it in Europe, uh, announced the pricing, which was really the, the only uh, new information that, that we got. Ooh, what happened with the video here? Mm -hmm. That's weird. Um, 70,000 euros, uh, including that. So it adds up to like, the equivalent of like $64,000 before taxes. But that even though we talk about dollars it doesn't mean it's going to come to the us anytime soon or ever really um i'm not even sure that does mercedes sell their vans here uh i've I've, I've seen sprinter vans but not those minivans no not the passenger van or maybe right. they sell it just to commercial companies but not not to, i don't to think i've seen those either company. though that's a minivan yeah. that's like uh yeah. so yeah i don't think those are here yeah, but spec-wise, the van is interesting. We're talking about 250 mile range on the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, um, 110 kilowatt fast charging. So not bad specs at all. And um, it looks good too. It looks very good inside. Yeah, when I when I talked to them in uh, um, Germany, uh, they were like, you know, this is what, uh, you know, like airport shuttles are gonna use, yeah. um, hotels, Mm -hmm. uh you know business meetings campus stuff it's like uh, a very purpose-built thing and the price uh isn't crazy like uh you know a the gas equivalent doesn't i, I think costs around the same amount yeah so so so, so there's some like uh, if you uh, dig into that the the cost of the actual like it start at thirty seven thousand euros the the v class minivan there so it's much more expensive but but apparently though the 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 thing that's, that's making the yeah, it's not completely empty, but it's like the very, very base version, which they don't do for the EQV, which I, right. I think is kind of a bummer. Like, I would like to compare like apples to apples here, like see, if, see, and I'm sure some people would like it, like with the less luxurious interior too, and everything. But it's yeah, Mercedes. It's, uh, right. so, I mean, some people so, would like a cargo van, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Though there are already some option for that, with like Nissan and whatnot right. in Europe. Uh, but yeah, so if you look at the um, this option with the, the more like fancier interior here, uh, the price is very similar. So that's that's interesting in that front. I think it's like five thousand uh, dollars more expensive. So uh, especially when you put some incentive into them and everything, uh, that that would be a, that would be uh, actually cheaper than the gasoline version. So kudos on, to Mercedes on that front. All right, Rivian, we're already really Rivian. All right, if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments, and we um. Uh, we will we'll get to them in a minute. We're just going to do our last article of the day here, uh, which uh, I thought was pretty interesting. I'm very excited about those solar battery uh, yacht and, and catamaran and, and things like that. Yeah, uh, it's 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 just like it's such a, a romantic idea that the idea like you, you have like a boat that you can live in and it's completely autonomous. Like there's, there's no the, 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 it's self sustaining. Yeah, you, you have like your onboard water distillery uh, that distillery. Uh, Desalinization system. Uh, you have batteries. You have solar. You can technically travel the world uh, without needing any fuel at all, any water at all. Just not uh, very quickly at this point. Yeah, just not quickly for sure. Yeah, we can get into that. So this is Azura Marine. They unveiled the uh, Aquafina. What, what's the name of uh, Aquanima Forty Series? So it's their latest all electric solar. Uh, they call it a yacht, but it's, I think it's more like a catamaran, really. Uh, and 40, a series is probably uh, 40, 40 feet long. Beautiful boat, beautiful little vessel. 
Uh, it's equipped with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and a 10 kilowatt of solar power on it. And with two 10 kilowatt propulsion motors on them. So the idea is that uh, you could run at half capacity on solar. All day long. All day long. And uh, you can, or you can run a little less than that and charge your batteries. And, and then run also at night uh, if you wanted to on the batteries. Or you can just like uh, hang out in like the Caribbean and, and uh, go from deserted island to the other and 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 just uh, uh, never have to to fuel your car uh, your car your, your vessel, and uh, it's also equipped with like like I said a distillation system so you really never have to stop for anything you don't have to stop for water you don't have to stop for um, for fuel it's it's really a, a neat little um, boat here uh, they say that they can travel basically more than 100 nautical mile, which is 185 kilometer in a single day without stopping. So it's not, because it doesn't cover that much distance, but it, it, it still can. Uh, they they technically, they said that they could uh, crush an ocean with it uh, and it would work just again, it would be slow. Right, yeah, as long as you're okay with like a six month crossing of the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's kind of interesting. The, the big thing, I guess, like the idea of this is like, you have a 60 kilowatt hour battery. So like theoretically you wake up in the morning uh, and you have a 60 kilowatt hour charge from like the dock or something. And then, you know, the sun comes up and you're getting solar and you run off solar and then you, you know, you, you want to go a little bit faster than the solar is coming in and, and you start using that battery up. And then, you know, by the end of the day, you're probably getting pretty low on solar and you come back into dock and, and mm. at that, you know, in that way you can go 20 kilowatts which is, uh, I don't know, like 30 horsepower-ish. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's not like a super speedboat by any means, but it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's I, a pleasure boat. We're talking like a, like a eight guests, like four cabin. Yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty cool, man. I would, I would dig having that. $500,000 seems a little pricey, a little out of my... Uh, yeah, but to be fair, like the, the uh, catamaran this size, it is pricey to start with. I don't know right. if like five hundred thousand dollar pricey, but it, the, the, those are not cheap at right. all. Uh, so it's not that much more expensive than actual 40, uh, uh, 40 feet boat. I'm sure, it's a little bit more expensive than the one with a diesel motor, but not crazy expensive. Yeah, and oh. wouldn't it be nice if you see like you go to like Monaco or something where they have like in the bay of the Monaco they have like. Oh, hundreds and hundreds of boats there right and they're all be all electric you're running on solar oh that would make those places so much nicer than they already are i wonder if anybody's done like a solar sail like you know you have that sail material but i wonder if you could put solar panels i mean i know uh you know larry ellison's oracle um like that yacht had that it was like mm -hmm. a, a rigid sail it wasn't a, a flappy mm -hmm. sail so i wonder if anybody's working on uh solar sails of any sort because that would be even better like to have solar and a sail powering you you know you could use the wind when the wind was good and solar other times mm -hmm. yeah i agree yeah because you could add a sail to that easily and and uh, even if it's not a solar one just a real sail and right on, on top of the solar that could increase your speed yeah Really cool. I mean, if uh, if that company, Azura Marine, they want to uh, get me a, a test, a, a review unit, I, I'm down. Like, uh, yeah, fly me into uh, the Caribbean or, or, or the Mediterranean Sea, and I'll uh, I'll go do a review of that of that boat. I'm down for it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to the questions. All right, uh, let's see. We're going to shake and bake. Will the upcoming million mile battery make these models obsolete? That was kind of a Osborne effect question that we had. Yeah, we went through that a little bit. So hopefully not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Andy had the Aqua valve. Um, all right. So uh, Jim doing modular battery design. Um, that's with uh, LG as their partner. Um, we don't know what Tesla's is going to be like, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, this like every battery is modular. Like that's right. what the battery is. Like it's it's a bunch of uh, of batteries put together, like a, a bunch of cells put together. That's a, that's battery. Like it's it's modular already. I don't. I never got that. Uh, so Tyron says honestly, I don't see the price cut at all. I've been looking at the performance model 
S and three, and they're basically the same price. I, I don't know if Tesla made changes to the performance line. Is that right? Oh, okay. All right. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Give me a second. I think my girlfriend locked herself out of the house. For some reason right. gonna we're we're going to go through some more questions then. Okay, go ahead. All right. Working on getting rid of inventory cars, the ones without the million mile battery. So Dan Obert says that uh, he's kind of implying that the uh, the new cars uh, are all going to have uh, the million mile batteries and Tesla will discount the ones without the million mile batteries. Um, and then everything produced now have million mile batteries unless he's an insider. Uh, uh, I'm assuming that these are guesses. Uh, the Ozzy Osbourne effect. That's a, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, Google Ponzi says, I think new battery technology will already be in production before the battery day. So no Osborne effect. I think that's right. I don't know if it's going to be scaled to uh, filling that up. Though. Yeah. Like we said, probably just from all S and X. Right. That could make sense. And why is Giga Nevada not finished yet? Giga Shanghai seems to be getting more resources. We get a question like this, I think, almost every week. Um, yeah, it's not the same thing. Giga Nevada is a Panasonic partnership. Panasonic just started and make money now on the factory. So now they, they, they're starting to think about expanding again, but hasn't been the case before that. Uh, judging by Elon's recent comments about battery modules, I don't think Tesla will go that route. A dedicated form factor for each vehicle without internal modules makes more sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've been talking about that, like dropping the modules and doing just from from like cells to pack. Uh, but but they could still do different capacity with, with that. Like that that doesn't necessarily mean that it locks every model to one capacity. Uh, Jose F says, "Are ID three and ID four compliance cars, or is VW finally serious about EVs?" Um, you could make the argument that they are, uh, well, uh, at least for the ID3. The ID4, I think, that is going to hit, hit more markets, but the ID3 is not going to the US because Volkswagen doesn't really have to do it in the US right now. So, to a degree, they are, but uh, to be fair to, to Volkswagen, they're not treating it like a, a compliance car. Like, they are betting on it big time. They're spending a ton of money on the program. They want to make money off that car by itself without the emissions. So, uh, the regulation, so so uh, it's it's in between, like it's a new version of that. It's... All right, uh, shake and bake, uh, hook up with pilot truck shops for superchargers. I feel like there was some sort of uh, EV uh, thing at what's pilot. A pilot. What's a pilot truck? truck uh, it's it's just like a brand of um, truck oh. truck stops on the highways in the U.S. Okay. Um, I'd have to look it up, but I think there is some sort of EV component there maybe the mega like, charger is going to go there yeah that would make, make a lot of sense mm -hmm. um this guy says it costs six thousand dollars to install a charger at my miami condo that sounds a little pricey uh go check out those splitter thing that they have like the the i reported them i reported on them before uh that that it's a lot easier to convince your condo to install charging station with those because it split the uh uh, it, the electricity is still going to go to your own uh, condo box, electrical yeah. box. Um, let me, let me, I can keep going. I'll see if I can find the name. All right. Rich Tier says maybe the Model Y and Roadster winners sign an NDA so they can't talk about their wins publicly. You think, <laughs> well, you think that's realistic? What's the advantage of that for Tesla? Yeah. Like, uh, don't, don't get hyped. Yeah. Keep it on the down low. The Tesla charger is the cheapest EV charger option out there, except for installing a NEMA 1450. Um, there are really cheap. Op I mean, there's like $99 options at uh, Amazon. I wouldn't go with a $99 option, uh, but it's Tesla is definitely not the cheapest uh, EV charger out there. Uh, they, what does what a wall charger cost these days? The okay. Tesla one is 500 bucks. Yeah, there's there's other 500 one. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm doing a review right now on uh, what uh, uh, NL juice box and a charge point, and they're five and six hundred dollars. So um, my sponsor for the Model X series is four hundred bucks, and has ten kilowatt capacity. So that's probably one of the cheapest one out there. Yeah, I, I would say the Tesla one is, is pretty nice, though. So and mm -hmm. it's 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 priced. Um, what do you what do you want to say? Like it's it's you get what you pay for it's like not it's nice and it's good whatever 
Uh, uh, just just real quick for the the condo thing, uh -huh. uh, it's the the company is called um, well little uh, it's whoop. no that's not the company uh, RVE the RVE box and uh, the the box is called a DCC and uh, th that's uh, something that goes between the main breaker and your panel unit and you you link that to your charging station so like you still have an electrical uh, installation and everything for it but uh it, it basically doesn't require anything for your condo like doesn't require a new a, a new breaker a new panel unit anything like that so uh you can probably get away depending on how far your parking spot is from the um uh the, the panel unit uh, uh the meteor stack the main breaker you can probably get away like a thousand bucks or something yeah um Jordan Hart says, yes, install a NEMA 1450 outlet and use adapter charger that comes with the vehicle. Um, that's not the point, though, with the condo. Yeah. That's not what makes it hard. Like, that, make, that what's my car is, like, linking it to the electrical system. Yeah, I mean. That's, that's normally split for, like, the condo and everything like that. Yeah, and, you know, these uh, 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 chargers that I'm reviewing are, are Wi-Fi, and they, you can see how much is going, and you can see how much a month is. So, like, a yeah. landlord. A landlord could just say, look, I'm going to log in at the end of every month and see how much you've charged. They hate so, that, though. I know. It's, it's it's a pain in the ass. So hard for them to convince them for that. Like, everyone, like, everyone that lives in condos, they want to go electric. That's what they always tell me. Like, the HOA is, like, super hard to deal with with that. Like, they don't it's want true. to. It's true. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's rough. Mm -hmm. uh, Rich Tier says, I prefer to keep my charger adapter in the car so that I can't accidentally leave it at home when going on a road trip. That's That's not a bad idea. We left. We went to Vermont once one time without it. It was kind of a pain. Uh, we had to go uh, down to Manchester. Yeah, that, that's so. one of the arguments for uh, an actual home charging station, like you know, to, to have one that's fixed there and you keep right. one in the car. Because otherwise, you wouldn't really need it because every car comes with a level two charger, basically, and you can just plug yeah, in. Yeah, it. it's kind of weird, though. Like uh, some of the bikes Micah has reviewed have, like, instead of having a. Uh, you know a plug or whatever they just have like a spool thing that you just plug into any yeah. wall outlet yeah. that wouldn't be like i'm surprised cars never did that like uh mm. i mean it's it's kind of janky but like yeah you know, just, just as an emergency situation like something coming out of the trunk mm -hmm. you know at just a 110 nothing crazy i guess that's not really mm -hmm. optimal all right uh i don't know what that means if it is selling above expectations it is normal to cut price that's I think our point that, uh, we were talking point. it's a diamond issue for sure right so uh eagle says do you guys think tesla will ever make an e-moped or e-motorcycle or e-bike so uh no they won't make an e-motorcycle simply because elon got in a motorcycle accident one time and that's that's how they roll but let's say a dirt bike a dirt bike might be a possibility right? yeah i mean they did make the uh that quad um mm -hmm. But Elon did tell Kara Swisher in a interview a few years ago or a year ago that uh, a Tesla e-bike would be possible. And I think that would be super cool. And it would definitely shine a light on the, the whole sector, which I think is it mm -hmm. blowing up right now anyway. Uh, Zach Hall, a, a fantastic audio engineer and somebody who knows quite a bit about the, uh, the Artemis, uh, notes that Artemis is the twin sister of Apollo. And then there's other people with other Artemis trivia there. Mm -hmm. uh, no chance Tesla will make an electric motorbike. Elon has stated that because of their poor safety. Mm -hmm. And didn't Elon have a motorcycle no, accident? Yep. Uh, and then I think we're getting toward the end here. Uh, mm -hmm. Still on Artemis. Just saw Fred's article about the Model 3 being the best-selling car in California. Do you think this trend will keep up for the Model 3 after the Model Y enters the picture? I think... Think model three sales remain or go down? Uh, good question, really. Um, it's a really good question. I, I don't know. Like, um, hmm. I would say they go down slightly. Yeah. I would say model Y eclipses the model three as the best selling car once. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, for sure. That model Y will sell more than model three, but would that mean the model three will sell less, though? I don't know, maybe, because maybe like Tesla has had this advantage of like bringing, like just keep expanding the EV market. So even though like you think like, you, you capitalize some of your cell, but you just keep expanding the market so much that you, that you don't even realize you're capitalizing your cell. So maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, Model Y 2.5X sales, Elon predicted a while back. I think he predicted 
Model Y would sell more than everything else combined. I, I feel like I remember that. That, that would be 2.5 times uh, okay. whole three probably. <laughs> Uh, waiting for my Model Y. Any word of production volume out of Fremont? Uh, I'm also waiting, uh, but I'm waiting hopefully till August because that's when my lease is up on my Model X. Um, what do you think? Uh, I haven't heard much since the production reopening. We we heard like 200 cars a day for the first week, so the production ramp up might be a little bit slower. So Tesla needs to catch up. The suppliers need to catch up too. So well, I, I might look into it next week. See you know, if I can. Scrape up some production numbers together. Uh, Jordan Hart says, my comment was just to point out the cheapest, safest option for home residential charging. That's true. A $99 charger is probably going to catch your house on fire or your car on fire or both. Um, and Tesla's is is, is very uh, priced, priced well. Um, many Tesla buyers assume they have to go buy a fancy charger and don't realize the included plug can go up to 30 amps. Mm -hmm. Actually, it goes up to 32 amps for the short range and the long range and the original one goes up to 48 amps and the ones mm -hmm. that come with the model x and s do as well uh so p square i don't remember what he's referring to but uh, i think it's the installation of a, of a charging station yeah he would be missing out on the 600 hundred dollar financial assistance yeah uh you know you got to do what's best for you uh hopefully more uh condo associations are kind of thinking ahead and and start building a ev you know a a platform for um installing evs and and kind of making it i mean i think it's happening on a government level too i think you can't just tell a, a uh, person that is in your housing that no you can't do an ev thing like you have to make it make an attempt at least yeah it probably depends on the market though maybe not yeah. everywhere yeah, certainly California, but probably not Wyoming, for instance. Mm -hmm. All right, that's pretty much all the comments today. Yeah, thanks a lot for listening, everyone. Thanks a lot for watching on YouTube. You can give us a thumbs up. That's always good. Apparently, the YouTube algorithm loves that for some reason. <laughs> but if you want to keep up with the show, give us a subscribe and uh, hit the notification button so that you know when we are back on for the show and our other videos I have a good one coming on the, my high mileage model x soon and um, on your podcast app you can always give us a review and five stars that's already helpful and we're going to see you same time next week have a good one guys